Uh, it's, the, the music holds up so well, and it's really, um, what's the word? It's, uh, The thing that Freddie invented, uh, the Tear Down the Walls record, was considered by many to be a seminal folk rock record, it, it kind of a, a, a precursor of what was to come. I went up to New York, of course, to you know, renew my chops, for one thing, because after all I was a New York guy, a Brooklyn guy, and I was yeah. down in a quiet place. And I was happy to be there, but I had to play and had to learn. And I was working at these bars on 7th Street Causeway. There was no coffee house or hoot nanny or anything like that. And I'd go up to New York and, and then I met Fred. It was a cold winter night. Cold. And I'm sitting there and Dean Overlandy and we're playing guitar. And the door opens up and in comes Fred. And, and Dino says, oh Fred, this is Vince Martin, Fred Neal. I said, hi Fred. Hoyt Action. Hi Hoyt. Uh, you know. We started to play, the four of us. And Fred looked at me and says, where'd you learn to play like that? He says, you know, I said, I said, in Brooklyn. So I said, bullshit. I said, no, 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 Brooklyn. I said, you know. He says, where are you from? I said, Brooklyn. Oh, come on. He says, cut the shit. He said, where are you from? I said, Brooklyn. I said, where are you from? He says, never mind. We became friends. Then we go to the wall, and we go to the gaslight and play for baskets. Me, Fred, and Dino, and uh, Jimmy Gavin, Bobby Gibson. Bob Camp, Shel Silverstein, I mean, come on, it's like, what, for five bucks, you could, all night long, great music, and we played until four in the morning. We kept, as long as there were people sitting there, we sang. Al Mallard came over to the coffee house and he says, Vince brought this guy back to New York, you gotta hear him. Okay, went over there, and it's Fred Neal. Fred came down to the Grove, okay, and I had no idea. Don't ask me when, how he got there, if he flew, if he walked, I have no idea. Freddie shows up at my place in Coconut Grove. Okay, there he is, Fred Neal. Hey, Fred. And we started to sing together. Then Fred and I began to seriously work on some tunes. Weary blues are from wind. Lord, I've been waiting too long. And then we went up to New York. We had some tunes we'd been working on working. We wanted to work together. We wanted to work together. We knew that. And we put together a few tunes. And with Freddie, that was a job of work. <laughs> you know. So we got a job at the gallery. Opening the show for Mississippi John Hurt, who was wonderful. And Fred and I began to sing there. And then one night, we're walking down the street. Uh, I see this kid in a tan raincoat coming down with a holster full of harmonicas. And I said, hey, I said, you play those things? And Fred, oh, oh you got to stop everybody and ask him. I said, leave me alone, Fred. <laughs> I said, you know, Fred. He said, yeah, he was John Sebastian. And I said, why don't you come down and play harp with us? And Fred said, oh, God. I said, Fred, stop it. <laughs> I said, you know. So John came down to the guest light. And I don't think Felix was working with us yet. I'm not sure. I think Fred introduced Felix. I'm not sure. But John came down. Goes into the little kitchen, back of the gaslight, under the kettle of fish, on McDougal Street, and begins to boil marbles with his harps or something to soften the reeds. So, I, so Fred says, "That's it." My shit is pretty weird too. I said, "I had never seen that." And John says, "I have to soften the reeds so I can play cross harp." Okay, that made sense. Well, he came out on stage and just, just, I said, oh, "Thank you, Jesus." Oh yeah, man. You know, the great. The goddess smiled on us that night. Felix came along with the guitar on. So we had a really unusual thing. You had two 12 strings and a guitar on with Felix, who, with Mountain, played fretless bass. That was the first fretless bass player, and it sounded great. It was great. People kept walking in, Grossman had come in, and Dylan, and Joan Baez, and you know, the village back then. Everybody lived there. Because we weren't anybody then. Dylan wasn't anybody then, he was Dylan. Yeah. You know, it was like, this is before people became big. When we 
redid line and track. Nobody was doing that stuff. Nobody was doing that. That Fred began to play 12 string in a fashion to imitate the sitar, which he was fascinated with, but he never got around to playing, which I actually had one of at Aviation Avenue in my house, which is an impossible bloody thing to play unless you have someone teaching you. And I didn't have Ravi Shankar, so I didn't play it. So I just sat there with the two gourds and a zillion strings, and duh. <laughs> when David and Mike and I were in the Balladeers, and Chip, David's brother, Ethan, we were very Fred influenced. We were doing it as a quartet. Ethan was a good bass player. He played it, and it, so he was percussive. And people asked us, what do you call that? And we were trying to think of a name for it, and we came up with folk and roll. We were so wrong. We could have been wronger. Somebody else later on in England, it turns out, you know, folk rock. But but it, it wasn't because we were being so inventive. Yeah, we were imitating Freddie. And so the rockabilly thing was creeping into the folk thing. Those things were what Crosby and those guys heard. And that's the truth. I mean, you know, David heard that. He loved it. Okay. And that's what he took with him. Stephen Stills and people sure, like that. Sure, sure. But we 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 done it first. And Paul Rothschild walked in one night and said, I'm a producer with uh, Electro Records. He said, Would you guys like to do a record? Fred, no, forget it. I said, yeah, 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 we sure do. I said, man, I just got married. Okay, I need the money. Fred, you need the money. Stop. Okay. And he said, I said, what are you going to pay us? He said, I'll give you 500 bucks advance. I said, done. <laughs> I said, go with Fred. said, oh. <laughs> we went into the studio, Master Tone Studios, uh, four track studio. And we rehearsed, and we rehearsed, and we rehearsed, uh, we rehearsed, we really rehearsed. I mean, that's not accidental, you know. Fred songs, well, like tone poems. Fred songs aren't really songs. They're complete thoughts. One of his songs, like I got him, is not a complete thought. Okay. It's a riff. It's a riff. He does a lot of riffs. But it's good. Or it's oh, a yeah, good riff. Well, yeah, I didn't say it wasn't. I was saying, but people don't understand. As a man who sings the riff, pretty much the only person that can sing the riff. It's not, it's not nothing that translates into what I can do, or I'm not genius enough to do it, whatever, but I couldn't do it. And Freddie knew that. Freddie was not just a Freddie was a shrewd guy, he knew that. I say I got them If you want them now I got them I got apples and peaches and pears and I think it is a very good record, and it took me a long time because there was a long period of time for various reasons where I didn't want to hear it, okay? The way you hear yourself in your head is never the way you are on record, that's for sure. Uh, it, it's quite a shock the first time, believe me, as a professional. But then, as time went on, okay, and I began to listen to it again. I listened to Morning Dew. Walk me out in the morning my honey Walk me out in the morning That'll, That gives me goosebumps. I go, wow, Vincent. Brought me to tears one night, my own record. I said, wait a minute, are you stroking yourself? Stop. And I said, no, wait a minute. It's good. Fred was beautiful. I was good. I mean, it's just right. It's just righteous. But with Fred and I, it was like just, we just... If we started to sing a song, we'd sing it together and it just Tear down the wall Can't you hear the melody? Tear down the wall One The thing that Freddie invented, uh, the Tear Down the Walls right Walls record, was considered by many to be a seminal folk rock record. It, it kind of a... a, a precursor of what was to come. It's the, the music goes up, 